Okay, so we're going to talk about what we've read so far in And Then There Were None. So yesterday we read chapters three and four. In chapters one and two, that was just expository. So all we were really doing was getting exposed to who the characters are and what the setting is. So we have uh, 10 characters. Um, we didn't meet all of them until chapter two. And this story takes place on an island off the coast of Devon, which is in England. So you can look it up on a map if you need to. Just know that it's kind of rainy and the, the island is way far out offshore and it's really hard to get to. Sometimes if it's raining really hard, they can't even get to it by boat and if the island may be inaccessible for weeks, which is problematic if you're on the island and you need to get off. So in chapter three, we learned that all of the people who've been gathered on this island, they've all been invited by mysterious different people, which turns out to actually be the same person. After they finish eating dinner, there is a disembodied voice that comes over this record and it accuses every single person who is in attendance of causing the death of another person. We also learn that these people even though they caused the death of someone, they were never held accountable for their crimes. Like none of them ever went to jail. Um, some of them have guilty consciences about it. Some of them don't. For example, um, Anthony Marston, um, he didn't even recognize the names of the people he said he, he killed. Um, and it wasn't until he was like, everybody was going over the crimes that they had committed or not committed, that he was like, oh, that must be those kids I ran over. Oh, that was such a burden because I had lost my license for a whole year. And somebody else is like, it's probably pretty bad for the kids, too, because they, you know, died. Um, so we learned that this record that played that said everybody's crimes was called Swan Song. That was the title on the record. And a swan song is in folklore. It is said that swans are silent most of their lives. But to make up for the fact that they are silent, they actually have a very beautiful singing voice. And the moment before they die, they sing the most beautiful song. And that is known as a swan song. So, I heard that. so metaphorically speaking, a swan song is one last act or one last gesture right before someone's death. And so that's what this is. This record is someone's last act before their death. Given that we know that everybody's going to die on the island, we still don't know exactly who this applies to. In chapter three, everybody goes over their crimes, either whether or not they did it or didn't do it. And we also learn the connecting thing amongst them is not only that they all were responsible for the death of someone, but they were all invited to the island under circumstances that seemed very personal. So they arrived to the island um, because they were invited by someone who was like a former acquaintance or somebody who knew them from a long time ago, but they're all kind of not close friends. Um, so what we know from that is that the people who are on the island and the, the person who invited them knows a lot about each person, like knows really personal details about their past. In chapter four then, oh, and sorry, after the message was played, um, Ethel Rogers, who is like the cook for the house, she completely fainted, which we decided in class that was really suspicious behavior because if you're innocent of a crime, you normally don't faint when somebody brings it up. So she fainted and she was in such distress that they had to give her alcohol, then carry her to bed. And then Dr. Um, Armstrong had to give her a sedative to get her to sleep. So she was quite distressed. Chapter four. Everybody starts going into the accounts of what they were accused of. Some people admit to it. Some people don't admit to it. Some people have more severity in their crimes. But yes, they all were responsible for the death of someone. At the end of this chapter, Anthony Marston, he's the guy who ran over the kids with his car. He's like, oh my gosh, this is like a real life detective story. Um, we're going to figure out who the murderer is. This is so exciting. I can't wait to solve this. And in his joyous nature, he grabs his drink and he chugs it and he chokes. And we have to assume that he died. And we also have to assume that it was murder. And we're going to assume that it was murder based on the poem. The poem says, 10 little soldier boys went out to die and one choked his little self and then there were nine. Given that he just choked, this is the first death. 
we're going to get that death confirmed for us once we get into chapter five. Chapter five is also, chapter five and chapter six, that's what we're reading today, are also going to go a lot more into the details of um, the poem and how people are going to be affected by the poem in the story. I think that's about it. Email me if you have questions. Good luck. Also, if you want to read ahead and you want to take the quizzes as you read ahead, you absolutely can. So let's say you get through chapters five and six today and you're like, wow, this is super interesting. I want to keep reading. You can. The quizzes are available to you. You do not have to take them until the day they are assigned. You will not get late points off until then. But if you want to work ahead, you can. So theoretically, you could be finished with everything in this class except for the final at your own leisure. All right. Let me know if you need anything. Peace.